six nine seven seven. This is Gallo's patent. Four six four four six four seven 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 three. Okay. Let me let me address that. Okay. Here she's talking about a patent from the United States that was filed in April of nineteen eighty four. At the same time, the United States acknowledged that they finally knew what the mystery illness was. That was April of nineteen eighty four. Dr. Robert Gallo and Secretary of Health and Human Services Margaret Heckler, I believe, in 1984. What you'll find is that as they went to the podium to tell the United States people that they knew what the mystery illness was, here Dr. Gallo was filing a patent for the continuous production of HIV. Of course they knew what it was. The patent that you're speaking of there, and let me give the, that number again, is 464. 7773. It is how you make AIDS continuously. How dare them? It is the culmination of this federal program, the special virus. That here, that patent there shows that HIV is an invention. It is an intellectual property. HIV is synthetic. That it had nothing to do with, nothing to do with an African and a monkey. How dare our foolish society, how dare the comatose mentality of both black and white people in this country to believe that an African and a monkey can do something in such a fashion, and not only once. Remember, they have created three HIV viruses. We just deal with the primary one. But that three monkeys and three Africans at the same time in history uh, can do something to create the greatest pandemic in the world. Who is being fooled here? In light of the progress reports of every experiment and every contact of this secret federal virus development program, I, I am appalled. Because I believe in our Constitution. I always have. I've always thought that I had a right to life. These documents prove we do not. It is time for us to wake up. It is time for us to respond and to demand a review of the U.S. Special Fires Program. And since it's happening here in New Jersey, in Asbury Park this day, we have begun something here today that is irreversible. And if the media and the press here and Asbury Park are genuine, and many of us believe you are not, then you will cover this story and we will break this story open to the American people and around the world. It is time for review of the federal program that made HIV and AIDS. It is time for an end to HIV and AIDS, and we can do that. Our collective efforts can do that. So, uh, Doc, I want to be very clear that what she is looking at is not what you or others purport to be the patented cure, but actually the patent on AIDS itself. That's the patent on AIDS itself. Wow. Can I have, can I have the patent number again for what you Yeah, the, the cure patent is 5676977. You go to www.usptopatentandtrademarkoffice.gov.gov. It says patents on the left, you click on that. It says search, you click on that. It says patent number search, you click on that, and you put that number in. It'll take you two minutes to see. Here is the cure, patented by the United States for HIV and AIDS. HIV and AIDS is synthetic, and so is the cure. The cure is silver 4, oxygen 4. Silver 4, oxygen 4, the combination of which allows for a, a systemic cleaning of your blood. That's exactly what it does. Your blood is like the water in a swimming pool. You put a, pe a pebble in the swimming pool, the water becomes clear. You put something in your blood system, your blood becomes clear, your blood is contained, mm -hmm. and it stays that way. It will be six years that I took to touch yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a one-time infusion. It takes about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Six years, and that's all that I've had. My records are maintained by the VA hospital system. Mm -hmm. Not that it's the best hospital system, but my records are maintained by my government. Mm -hmm. Six years ago, I took that one-time dose. It is cheap. It is effective. You know, in a free crust, this is what our people are, are putting across the world in Africa. AIDS cure found. Because by golly, that government has been sitting on the shelf waiting for us to wake up from our comatose mentality and find it. Mm. And they're saying so in Africa. AIDS cure found. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But then don't patent it in the first place. And since you patent it, then let's test it. That's all that we are saying. How dare you allow the patent to cure for AIDS to sit on the shelf? And smile in our face in the process. What kind of country is this? And if the media here can't get the question, I don't know where any place else can. You have some of the brightest people in this country, perhaps even sitting in this room right now. Either we wake up and stand up and fight this, or we all perish together. Yes. And in 
that regard, what we're talking about here is the infectious agent of HIV and AIDS itself. It appears to be that little six-sided mycoplasma. In fact, they have them on the cover of these progress reports. And, and this may scare you, and I hope that it does. Because on the cover of the schematic of the federal program, this is what it looks like. And you see a big old rat over here, but you see a human over here, you see a vial here, but you see something very strange at the top. Now, I, I recognize that I'm in a land of Bible scholars. Am I right? And, and uh, I'm just trying to make sure. I'm, I'm in the land of Bible scholars. Because the Bible has some things in it that appear to be predictatory. Mm -hmm. And one of those things is a, a number. There's a number associated with the Bible. Isn't there? 266? <laughs> well, I'll show you something how heinous this government is. On the cover of this U.S. special virus program are these little mycoplasmas here at the top of the noon hour. And they are six-sided figures, correct? And there's three sixes there? Six, six, six at the noon hour of the U.S. special virus program. That's how in your face this federal program is. Six, six, six at the noon hour of this federal program. That is just how heinous this federal program is. Now you're looking for your 666, well now you done found it. And now that you done found it, it is time for you to do something about it. Or what? The beast wins? It appears to be, I don't want the beast to win. But this federal program needs to be reviewed now that I know that you got 666 on the cover. I hope you're on our side. I hope you will unify and we unite and we bring forth the evidence that we have. How dare this government, how be so transparent to allow for a constitution that alludes to be the most democratic constitutional government in the history of the world, yet at the same time to have a heinous federal genocidal program of a stealth weapon that contains for a selective group. We're only 12% of the population, yet we're 50% of the AIDS cases. Hello? No, that doesn't even wake us up yet because we have the comfort, perhaps, of our faith which will carry us on into the afterlife. Some of us aren't trying to get there yet. And we certainly aren't trying to get to the afterlife at the hands of a heinous government, bolstered on evil. Yes, sir. How dare them tell me I have a right to life. I am fighting for my right to life, and if that includes yours, then join me. You know, it was very difficult because we spoke on this last evening about the comatose mentality that we have where we have been afforded uh, the luxuries of the things that we indulge in. Um, as I was saying last evening, you give a black man sex, religion, sports, music, movies, and food. Hmm. It's hard to tell him anything further. So what we're breaking through is this comatose mentality that everything is okay, everything's going to be all right, as we present now the stark evidence that everything is not okay and to try to to wake up, to re-educate all at the same time. So it is a complex kind of uh, solution. From the evidence standpoint, the U.S. flowchart from 1971 shows that specific experiments were worked on as early as 1971 to inhibit, control, and to vaccine against HIV as is evidenced by the flowchart document. So our cause is simple. We began by reviewing the immunological control section of the program that made HIV. That's again another reason why the origin of HIV is important because it will and does lead to the solution. That we can show the experiments from 1972 to the present that indeed if we review these early experiments, we'll find some of the keys that we're looking, allegedly looking for here in the modern day. But this is all a setup as is evidenced by again the flowchart document that indeed this is systemic, that there was a design purpose, plan, and intent of the United States to make this thing. Mm. So by reviewing the immunological control section experiments, that'll give us our first insight as to what they developed because